in this video, I want to talk about holsters. Uh, one of the most common questions I get during my classes is, is about holsters. And as you can see, there are a lot of options out there. So when an instructor uh, gives you an advice on holsters, try to listen to them because they've gone through, you know, exactly what I've gone through. And we went out and we bought a bunch of holsters. We figured out which ones don't work. And we're passing that knowledge along to you as a new student. So, like I said, when an instructor says, hey, this is the holster you should probably look at, take their advice. The, uh, the old adage, buy once, cry once, is if you go out and you buy something like this, and then you figure out it doesn't work, because, okay, this one was a little bit cheaper, right? So this was like 30 bucks. You went out and bought this, figured out, yeah, this isn't going to work. And then you actually go buy a good holster for 100 bucks. Well, now you spent 130 bucks instead of just 100 bucks. So I'm going to talk about all these different holsters, uh, show you some examples with firearms. So first and foremost, we're going to check these are clear <clears throat> a holster needs to do three things for you first and foremost it has to cover the trigger guard so when you have a firearm inside the holster that trigger guard needs to be covered so right here so ladies, if you carry in a purse, it still needs to be in a holster because you got to cover that trigger guard. If you carry loose inside of a purse and this thing is just flopping around inside the purse somewhere and then you get other things in there like pens and whatever, they can get inside that trigger guard, press off a shot. So it still needs to be in a holster regardless of where you're carrying it. So covering the trigger guard. Next, it has to retain the firearm. So if I go to the ground, right, that gun's not coming out. Uh, if, you, if you fall down or if you, you know, whatever happens to you, you want that firearm to stay in the holster. So if you hear this, it's got a nice little click to it. That means that holster's got good retention. You got retention screws on here that you can tighten this thing up or loosen it, however you need. And the last thing is, <clears throat> This holster needs to stay open when there's no firearm in it. So as you can see, this is made of Kydex and it stays open. So the reason for that is you don't want these holsters to collapse on you because when I go to put this back into my waistband, I need to be able to do it with one hand. Uh, if I'm holding a phone or a child or helping a buddy or something like that, I need to put my gun away. I don't need to be using two hands uh, and I, I often see this with with floppy you know nylon pocket holsters people will reach across and use their fingers to open this up while they're putting the gun in so you can see the problem here is, is I'm sweeping my fingers when I'm trying to put that that gun back into a holster so it needs to stay open on its own a lot of the leather holsters, so this one kind of stays open, but if you put any kind of pressure, and the problem is, is as your, your, your body is pressing against this, it's going to fold that closed. So it's going to be really hard to put that back in. Some leather holsters are a little stiffer than others. This one is, but it's still pretty floppy. So if I can, if I can squeeze that with my fingers, it's, it's no good. So let's talk about these holsters. This one's a relatively cheap leather holster. Like I said, it's, it's pretty floppy. So this is a type of holster that I would not recommend. This is another leather holster. It's an inside the waistband holster. It's a little stiffer, but still, if I can close that with just my fingers. So some good leather holsters are made with a, a steel band sewn into this, and it's really hard to keep closed. Or, uh, keep, yeah, keep closed. So if you, if you can squeeze this closed with your fingers, it's not a good holster. So let's move on to some other holsters that uh, I don't recommend. Paddle holsters. So this is a pretty common cheap holster. So this is Phobos and they make really, really cheap holsters. 
Uh, this is not something I would recommend that you you carry uh, out in public. Maybe if you if you're just going to the range and you need somewhere to to put your gun while you're on the range, Phobos holster is okay. All right, it's a, it's a okay range holster. The problem with these paddle holsters is they don't grab onto the belt very good. So when I put them onto a belt and I try to pull this this gun out. It's going to pull that whole holster with it so the whole thing just comes right out along with the gun so it's not something you want to carry uh, this is a hybrid holster so you can see it's got leather right here which goes against your body and then it also has kydex right here uh, in the theory these were a good idea but the problem i see when folks come out to train with me is as their body presses against this, it collapses that, that hole. So as your body presses against here, it collapses that, and now you can't get the gun back into the holster. So it's kind of the same problem with leather holsters, is this just collapses. So the hybrid holsters are things that I do not recommend. Uh, the dreaded phobe, or, uh, Blackhawk Serpa holster. Okay, so this is all Kydex. Uh, it has what's called a uh, a retention. This is a retention holster, which means that you have to push this little button to get the gun out. So you hear that click? That means this gun is engaged. This is a retention holster, it means I can't pull this gun out without pushing this. The problem and the reason why these holsters are banned on most ranges, I ban them on my range. I do not allow students to use these holsters on my ranges. As you're applying pressure right here and you pull this gun out, that finger can slip down inside the trigger guard. So I'm, I have to push this button. I have to apply pressure right here. If I apply too much, the finger slips down in the trigger guard, pops off around. So absolutely under no circumstances buy one of these serpa holsters okay just don't do it not even for a range holster nylon drop holsters don't recommend these either so uh, these are for you know for larping cosplay stuff like that this is not something you should actually be carrying on the range or even in public so right see how this is just kind of it's a universal holster and any holster that's universal is is just garbage so as this sits in there you can see it's pretty easy for that just to fall out so these these are no good all right so now let's start to get into the the decent holsters right holsters that you should buy so this is an all kydex range holster okay this is for training this is not something i'm going to carry in public because as you can see it's it's huge it's just a massive holster this is uh, unless you're wearing heavy coat heavy jacket lots of layers where you can you can conceal pretty easily i wouldn't recommend this to carry but as a training holster and something you wear on the range it's really good it's made by raven uh, that's Raven Concealment is one of the holster manufacturers that I do recommend. Uh, so you can see this is, a, this is a pretty big footprint, but it's still a very robust, very good holster. Now you've got some of the, so these are essentially competition and range holsters. So this is made by Blade Tech. Blade Tech makes a really good competition holster. Good retention. But as you can see from here, this part is going to stick out really far from your belt. So it's not going to be something that you're going to carry out in public unless you do have that really, really deep concealment, heavy jacket, whatever. And this, this part right here clips on, snaps together, hooks onto your belt really, really tight. You pull that down. So this is what I use in competitions. It's very secure, very good holster. I really like it. This is another one. As you can see, it's it's bulky. It's another Blade Tech, very bulky, but it's it's a good holster. Now, as far as carry holsters, let's 
This is an inside the waistband made by Black Arch. Uh, it's a very simple holster. Okay, it's for my Glock 19. And it's got the little, uh, I forgot what that's called, a little wing right there. But it, it, this grabs onto your waistband a little bit more. This is the inside the waistband holster. And as you can see, it's made for my light and for my threaded barrel and for my optic. So this is what I carry personally. So this is how my Glock 19 carries. It's inside the waistband. It's a good holster. I really like it. Black Arch uh, makes makes good stuff. So there's there's one more holster that I don't recommend that I'm seeing a lot more these days, and it's the side car holsters. So it's a holster much like this, but it's got a little side car on it that you can put your magazine in. So it's got a mag pouch right there. Usually uh, it's for appendix carry. So folks will have this on their appendix guns right here. And then you've got a little sidecar uh, off to either the left or right where the mag pouch is. The problem I see in trainings so when folks come out and train with me, you introduce a little bit of stress when they go to draw. Sometimes they'll accidentally grab a hold of the magazine, that spare mag, instead of their firearm. So it's it's a little thing. If you if you get one of those sidecar holsters, make sure you train with it and train extensively with it. Make sure you practice your draw. That way in a stressful situation, you're not reaching down and accidentally grabbing the magazine instead of your firearm. And really that's it for holsters. So remember, spend the money on a good holster. Don't buy crappy holsters. All of these are, are garbage. There's a few good holster makers out there. Black Arch, Blade Tech, Raven. Uh, there's a few others out there that make good quality products and you can just go online and search who, who makes the good stuff. But don't, don't buy the cheap trash, right? Uh, this is a, a potential life-saving tool and you need it to work just like your firearm. So spend a little bit of extra money on it and make sure you get a good holster. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys.